This is a Q&A lesson on practicing with the metronome. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters uh, for submitting questions. I hope I can give you some answers today. Um, and if you're interested in supporting the channel or the site, uh, there's a link for the support page in the description. So before I answer the questions, one thing I just want to say right off the bat is that the metronome, you know, the metronome is a tool that we use to either hone our skills or discover weaknesses in our playing. And so it's a tool for improvement and practicing. Don't think of it as much more than that. It's, it's, a, it's a tool that helps us. It's there to help us. So my big piece of advice is that when you're working with the metronome, make sure you also do the same working skills um, away from the metronome. So if you practice a rhythm with the metronome, turn, practice it with the metronome a few times, also turn the metronome off and practice that rhythm while tapping your foot and playing. Also practice the rhythm tapping your foot and singing the rhythm. Also practice it by clapping the pulse and singing the rhythm. You know, you practice it in every way you can because playing with the metronome is one skill um, but having good rhythm and having a rhythm that is, is a part of your musical being uh, is, is beyond the metronome. It, it encompasses a number of skills. And so this is, this is one factor and one helpful tool. But in order to become a well-rounded musician, you have to practice these things in a variety of ways. And remember, when, when people take musicianship classes, either you know, in, a, in a music school or at university, we practice our rhythms away from our instrument. Um, all of our practice in musicianship class is by singing or clapping or tapping or some kind of combination like that, which gives us um, a, a rhythm that is ingrained in our body, not just in our guitar technique. So again, my, my one recommendation is to use the metronome as a tool, but also use, you, you know, you can, use the metronome away from the guitar and singing and clapping. You can also turn the metronome off and practice your rhythms and, and sing and clap and all those things. Doing all of those things together will, will really help your rhythm. So the metronome is just one small factor in, in a large series of things that, that make you rhythmically um, solid and, and a well-rounded musician. One other thing that I'll, I'll just say before um, I answer all the questions is that um, the main goal is to be able to feel the beat with your body while playing rhythms with your hands. So, you know, if we're in 4-4 four, four time, then we're feeling 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe my foot is tapping 2, 3, 4. And this hand... plays whatever rhythms it has to play, but my body is feeling the beat. When I turn the metronome on, all I'm doing is syncing my body up with the tempo that, and consistency that the metronome is providing. So it's, it's not that I'm trying to ever follow the metronome. That is not the goal. You're never trying to place your notes with the metronome or in between the metronome or anything like that. You are actually feeling the beat and the metronome is just providing the tempo and the consistency and you're just syncing up the feeling of the beat with your body and the metronome. You're never trying to fit rhythms into the metronomes. You're always fitting the rhythms into your feeling of the beat. You just happen to be feeling the beat with the metronome. I think that, and that might sound convoluted, but it's really, really true is that you have to be feeling the beat in order to play all this stuff naturally. The metronome is just a tool for keeping that beat consistent and providing a specific tempo. But you're, you, you are the one that needs to feel the beat 
if you're not feeling the beat, then you're just you're trying then you're trying to randomly and spatially like just like throw notes at the metronome, you know, and rhythms at the metronome. But that's that's really not how we play music. We must be internalizing the beat, and then the metronome is turned on and just and is just providing the tempo for us. Um, John asks, when using a metronome on a new piece, how slow is a good starting point? Half speed, quarter speed? Great question, John, and there's there's no good answer. It, it depends on how you've prepped the piece. If you, sometimes when I prep a piece, um, I will circle all the most difficult sections and practice those first so that the whole piece, you know, when I'm reading through the piece later, um, the most difficult sections have been taken care of so my metronome speed can be a little bit higher. But in reality, like, when it really comes down to it is I'll put the metronome on and I'll start playing through the piece and if I get to a, a bar or a section that I, I can't play well, I have to turn that metronome down. And if that means turning it down to, you know, 2% of the speed, I'll, I'll do that. And sometimes I have lists of numbers on the side of my page where I, I've written the metronome marking down and that list is long, very, very long. Um, it means I started at like a ridiculously slow tempo. But remember, you don't just practice your piece, your new piece with the metronome. That's one way of practicing your piece. You put the metronome on to as slow as you can play the piece well from start to finish. But then I'll turn the metronome off and I'll, I'll pick little phrases and play those phrases more at tempo so I can get a feeling for the musicality of the piece. So again, metronome work is excellent, especially for guitarists, but it's just one factor involved in practicing the piece. So the answer is as slow as you need to go to play the piece well from start to finish. You can also cut the piece up and whatnot, but I often will do that with the whole piece and then I'll, I'll take small sections of the piece and work on it differently at different speeds. Um, isolating what, where my trouble areas are and practicing those trouble areas. So yeah, as slow as you need to go. Um, your, John's second question was, how would you phase out the metronome when mastering a piece which has sections of rubato? That's a great question. In general, pieces that have lots of rubato, um, I will use metronome less. However, I always make sure that I, I do in fact use it. Let's say you're playing even um, some Terega. <laughs> Bit of rubato there, right? I'll over exaggerate. <laughs> That's a bit of an exaggeration, but but there is some rubato there. Um, I always believe like rubato is just robbed time. It's like an elasticity to the rhythm, right? You should always be able to play your piece with the metronome. So if I'm if I'm playing a piece that has lots of rubato, I I. I will want to be able to play the piece slow with the metronome. Maybe just for the, for the main point of like knowing that I know the rhythms properly and also that um, I'm not fooling myself about the rubato. Like sometimes I'll add rubato because something's technically difficult, but that doesn't mean that it's a good musical place to add rubato. So, so using the metronome, you, you know, you can go through the piece and just like discover if you have deceived yourself at all or or if you're playing it correctly and then I'll turn the metronome off and, and and play it in the way that I think is musically appropriate. So in general I use it less with pieces with rubato but I do use it to make sure that I'm playing the rhythms correctly and that I can play at a consistent tempo. So Brian asks a very similar question. Suppose there's a spot at which the tempo may be slowed briefly for emphasis. Can the metronome be useful in this situation? I think it really can be useful um, in terms of like actually performing the piece with the slowed tempo for emphasis. Um, no, it's not practical in, you know, for doing that, but I think it's still useful to practice the piece with the metronome. And so I'll explain. When um, the, one of the main goals of the metronome is to, is to create a very um, consistent and stable sense of the pulse. And so when you have a really consistent pulse, if you break it for emphasis, it can be very effective. If your pulse isn't very consistent though, and you have lots of rubato everywhere, 
then the emphasis isn't really an emphasis anymore, right? It, the emphasis is only interesting and emotionally uh, powerful if you have that consistent sense of the pulse. So, you know, if you're practicing it like a piece, and you have a consistent sense of the pulse, you know, that you can, that, that moment can be highlighted as something special. And you've broken the pulse a little bit for like that sweet little moment, right? Um, but if you're if you have tons of rubato everywhere, you know, then, then it's not very special anymore. It's like there's been tons of special moments. It's it's almost like um, we will we we've saturated the piece with with special moments. And they don't mean anything anymore. They're not as effective. So um, my, my recommendation is practice the pieces, practice your pieces with the metronome, make sure you have that consistent pulse. And when you turn the metronome off, because you shouldn't be practicing your piece all the time with the metronome, it should only be some metronome practice with the piece. And then you practice it without, and when you, you, can, you can break that pulse for that emphasis, just on special occasions, right? And then I think it's really useful still to practice with the metronome to, to make sure that you're creating that consistency so that you have the option and the choice to then break it for emphasis. So Carlos asks, above the time signature, and this is in some pieces, the notation, uh, there's a notation like metronome marking um, quarter note equals 100. Now the piece may contain bar chords, eighth notes, triplets, how do you approach this while using a metronome? Um, well, the first thing is you want to make sure that you're, you're very secure with all the different rhythms. So, you know, if we turn the metronome on, I'm gonna put it to 60 right now. You know, you, you do want to make sure that you can play the different rhythms you have to play, right? Like if you're playing chord notes, You should be able to play eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Notice how I can count it either subdividing it with the ands or without, right? Or triplets. Triplet, tri uh, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. You, you want to practice like mixing those uh, like one two so you know like in terms of your your skill your rhythmic skills with the metronome you want to make sure that you are able to play all those rhythms once you have the skill applying it to your pieces is really not that big of a deal if it's technically difficult then you have to slow it down. But it, it's usually, when students come to me with this, it's, it's much more about um, how secure their actual rhythmic skills are and whether they've, they've actually practiced rhythm. And if they haven't and they don't have those skills, then of course when a, a tough rhythm comes up in a, in a piece, it's tough to play with a metronome. So my recommendation to you at first is just turn that metronome on and become very comfortable playing all the different rhythms in the piece just on an open string and then um, once you're really once you feel like you've ingrained that in your body you know put the, the guitar down and clap it out in other ways but um, then you can go back to the piece and like it, it, it should you should have more context for what you're practicing so it that's it's a large um, practice aspect that you'll have to explore, but you can just start really simple by playing some rhythms on an open string with a metronome. And again, don't let the metronome ruin your practice experience. Do a little bit of metronome work and then turn it off. Okay, um, Zachary and Eddie had a very similar question, so I've kind of combined them here. 
Um, Zachary says, I can set the metronome to sound on the quarter notes. If there's an eighth note, I can usually figure out where the halfway mark is, the upbeat. But I totally get lost when there's, say, a run of 16th notes, and I have to try to end up where I'm supposed to be on the last beat and hope that everything in between works out. Is there a better way? Eddie asks a similar question. Sometimes the metronome inside my brain does not sync perfectly with the real metronome. The ear says, wait for the beat. The brain says, too slow, pluck now. The hands, they get confused. So I think like Carlos's question, the first thing that you guys need to, to do is, is just practice some rhythms on, on open strings uh, with the metronome. Make sure that you can play a lot of these rhythms without the complication of the piece um, because that, that's asking too much. You're, you're, you're trying to learn the skill of playing with the metronome and playing rhythmically correct, but you're adding in all these like left-hand complications and right-hand complications and it's just like so much multitasking. So make sure that you, you just practice things with the metronome away from the piece, sometimes away from the guitar even, so that there's no conf confusion there or the, the, the skill that you want to ingrain into your body is there before you try doing it with a piece. I hope that makes, that makes sense. And I'm sorry, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm telling you kind of to, to go way back, but in, in your you know, practicing, but that's what we all have to do very often. I have to do that all the time too, is like stop, simplify, practice, gain skills. And any time that you're gaining skills is a net win overall for you. You're, you're, you're winning. You know, like you're, you're really, um, you're, you're getting better. Um, banging your head against the metronome during a piece and not, not being able to do it, that doesn't help you. You're not making progress that way, so don't do that. Just say that instead of using the metronome on this piece, I'm going to use the rhythms of this piece with the metronome on open strings and just try to gain some skill and maybe later I'll be able to do it with the piece. Just to answer um, Eddie's question about um, not being perfectly in sync with the metronome and the, the brain versus reality, um, the main thing I want to say here is that you need to be, you need to be feeling the beat and then when you turn the metronome on, you're just syncing up that feeling of the beat with the metronome. You're not trying to follow the metronome in any way. What you're really trying to do is you have the skill of playing rhythmically while feeling the beat. Because remember, rhythms and the pulse or the beat can be different things, right? The rhythms can have lots of different rhythms, but the beat is, is just the time signature. It's the way the music feels. So you need to be feeling the beat. And when you turn the metronome on, you're just feeling the beat with the metronome. And then your fingers kind of do these crazy things and these crazy rhythms, but your body is just feeling the beat. So my first advice is when you're working on a piece is start tapping the beat like with your feet and playing the piece or you know, whatever it is. That's my beat and I can play the scale while feeling the beat. And when you turn the metronome on, you're just syncing up what you were doing without the metronome to the experience with the metronome. You're feeling the beat. When you turn the metronome on, you're just feeling it at the speed of the metronome. There's no guesswork. There's no like, where do I play? Where do I play? It's you're feeling the beat and the metronome is providing the consistency of the speed or the tempo. That's all that's happening there. Never turn the metronome on and don't feel the beat and try to like follow the metronome. It's too crazy. It's too random. Um, you must be ingraining this into your body and just going along with the metronome. Um, Zachary asks, I'm never sure how to approach 6-8 time. If I set the metronome to 6 times per measure, that's really fast and busy and doesn't seem to capture the essence of what time signature of what the time signature is trying to do. But if I set it to only um, the, the first and fourth beat, then I lose all certainty about the other beats. Um, I haven't been able to find a good middle ground. 
Great, great question. Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, when we play in 6-8 time, you know, here I have it at, at 160 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You're right. There's too many beats. It's too like machine gun fire. Usually we want to, to play just two beats per bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, let me turn that down a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, when um, often in musicianship classes, yeah, we will practice singing rhythms while tapping or, or clapping just the dotted quarter note or, or the, on the first and fourth beat. Or we'll conduct, we'll conduct the time signature while singing. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, ta 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 ta. That is the feeling of the beat. The the conductor conducting two is actually the feeling of six eight, right? One two three four five six. One two three four five six. Much nicer feeling for 6-8. I'm, I'm starting to sound a little repetitive, but because I haven't, it's been the same answer to, to most of the questions, but um, I think you just need to work on 6-8 rhythm more. Um, so turn that metronome on and just start with... And then, you know, you can start adding in other rhythms. You know, there's there's lots of different rhythms you you can practice. Like in my in my volume two method book, that, that rhythm section has a bunch of you know open string rhythm exercises and six eight. You might want to just practice that kind of stuff until you feel like you actually feel it in your body. And without the metronome, remember, turn the metronome off sometimes and just feel the rhythm because you want to ingrain it into your body so that you can feel it. If you can't feel it, trying to sync up with the metronome just doesn't, doesn't really um, particularly work. And um, I, I, I think that people try to like mentally like judge the spacing with their brain, but that, that's not how we do it. We actually just want to feel it in our bodies and whatever the metronome speed is, the metronome's just helping us be consistent. So we're just syncing up the feeling that we have in our body with the metronome. We don't turn the metronome off on and try to follow the metronome, we, we try to sync up with the metronome. Okay, uh, Christopher asks, I have a looper pedal in my electric guitar setup, which also provides rudimentary drum beats. I'm wondering if this would be helpful in also understanding which beats are stressed, um, as well as just straight counting. Is this overcomplicating things? Uh, would just a straight tick be better in some cases? Uh, no, no. Uh, Either way, um, Christopher, uh, lots of metronomes these days will accent a time signature. All the digital ones, you can put in like 4-4 four, four time or 6-8 time, and it'll accent the beat for you. Um, that can be very helpful. That's what we're doing, you know, sometimes. Um, but also be able to do it in the other way. Um, drum machines are, are great because you can actually program in extra beats in the rhythmic pattern, so you can actually practice kind of like jamming, jamming in 6-8 time or something like that. Um, which is, is great. Um, that's how we learn real, really great um, musicianship skills. It's not just playing with the metronome, but playing with other people, playing with a variety of rhythms happening um, so that we're feeling the beat and feeling the time signature. But there can be all sorts of rhythms happening, and you don't need a metronome to do that. You can work with a percussion player or a, or a duet partner or something. And yeah, that will create a dynamic... Um, sense of the rhythm in your in your body. Sometimes we want to simplify it and just practice with a basic tick to just to for first uh, to simplify sometimes. But yeah, practice it in any way that you can. Christopher also asks, um, do you have any experience with the wearable metronomes, and would you recommend anything in that area? Um, I have done a review of one of the the metronome watches things that buzz you. Um, yeah, I mean, 
when I, and you know, in my disclaimer, I said like the metronome is a tool. And um, so those, those like wearable metronomes that buzz on you and stuff like that, that that's a tool as well. Um, but it's just one little tiny factor. It's not going to solve anything. It's, um, it's just another tool that you can use. So I'm not for it or against it specifically. Um, I think that you have to practice with the metronome, practice without the metronome. You have to sing your rhythms while tapping, play your rhythms while tapping. Sure, you can wear something and practice, but you know, you, you, the, it's the variety of ways of doing it that will um, give you good rhythm. And any one tool is not going to fix your rhythm. It may help and it may be another tool that you can use, but it's not gonna fix anything. It's the skill itself is, has to be dynamic and diverse. So, because in different situations, you're gonna feel the rhythm in different ways. And so if you're, if you're just using one device, um, as soon as you turn that device off, you might not have the skill anymore. You, you definitely need to be practicing in such a variety of ways that it's just ingrained in your body. And um, so um, you can experiment with different tools to help, but really in the end, the best thing to do is to tap and play and play with other people, work with the metronome, just do all the things that you can. Eddie asks, I would like to ask on the mentality point of view, so how do you bear the boredom of playing in a slow tempo with a metronome, especially when you're, I guess, learning a new piece, especially for beginners who tend to be impatient. I feel kind of, of weird and I can't enjoy the melody of the piece when it's at such a slow tempo. Yeah, Eddie, that's that's totally true. I actually find the metronome very engaging. Um, it's, it's stimulating to me in my practice sessions. It makes me practice longer and engage with the rhythm. So you can become very interested in engaging with the metronome and engaging with rhythm to stimulate it. But, uh, but remember, you don't, don't practice with the metronome all the time. Um, turn the metronome off. If you get bored, turn it off and, and practice without it and practice a little bit faster. Um, it's just like a, a small part of your practice session where you're like, I'm going to do some metronome work with this piece to, to help with a few things or discover some weaknesses I might have. But turn it off. Yeah. So don't overdo it, I guess is my main point. Learn to engage with it so it becomes stimulating, but don't overdo it and, and, and just practice away there. So thanks for everyone for submitting questions. I hope that helped a little bit. I think more than anything, my advice is, is, is contextual, is that you have to work on rhythm in a variety of ways um, to, to really ingrain the skills into your body and, and so that you can feel the beat and not just try to follow it.